What's up guys? For today's video, we're going to do something that's just a little lighthearted fun, not to be taken too seriously. The topic I want to cover is what watches I recommend for each of the enlisted ranks of the military. A uh, quick background, I am a Mustang, so what that means is that I was prior enlisted, I'm now currently a commissioned officer in the United States Navy, and this is just my recommendations, really what I how my watch collection evolved as I was promoted through each of the ranks. Again, this is not like a you know, set in stone list of watches. This is just what I have in my own collection, what I recommend. Again, really just for fun and not to be taken too seriously. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, uh, starting from E1 to E3. Okay, so you just enlisted in the military, you're starting off as either an E1 to E3, depending on if you join with college credits or, you know, whatever your background is. And you just graduated boot camp, you're at the PX or the next, and you're wondering what watch you should get. Hands down, I will always recommend G-Shocks. These two right here, these are the same model, essentially just different um, styles. This is the G... 9052 or sorry DW 9052 um, hands down some of the most reliable rugged watches you can get for the money um, really these are watches that you don't need to really be concerned about considering that you will be on the field or on the deck plate doing a lot of heavy work labor all that stuff so you need a watch that can handle a beating um, definitely these right here are, were my go-to's when I was a junior sailor in the Navy. Um, aside from the G-Shocks, you've also got Armatrons. Armatrons are fantastic for the price. You also really can't beat them. So right here I've got a, what model is this? This is the 40-8159. Now I've got a special place in my heart for this particular model. So truth be told, I was not the model sailor I, I i got in trouble a lot always you know breaking rules just stupid things um so what that meant was that i went to njp a couple of times and if you don't know what that is it's just basically you you messed up and you you know you got to do your time um so the great thing about this was it had a very clear display with many different alarms and so what that meant was i could set the time or set the alarms every time i had to check in with my duty chief because when you get in trouble and you're on restriction it's very inconvenient you have to check in multiple times so this watch really saved my ass because it reminded me by you know the alarms that I set every time I had to check in um, other than that I mean it's super budget friendly so you know you're not making a lot in the military especially when you are a junior soldier sailor marine what have you and so what you're getting here is a very durable very reliable timepiece um, and again I will I will always have a soft spot in my heart for this particular model again right here I've got another Armatron for you this is the uh, sorry I wrote it down here oh yeah 40 slash 66 23 again just a variety of different watches here um, this one is a very simple one I do love that polarized display where you can see that shiny green and the illumination is fantastic. It's a very simple watch, uh, a beater watch, really. All of these are beater watches, and that's what you should be focused on when you are a junior service member. Now, when you're talking about dress watches, you know, when I was growing up in the military, I wasn't really too focused on dress watches. I was really more focused on getting out of work, going out, chasing some tail. But there were some times when we had to get in our dress uniforms, so the watch that I recommend for that is a Casio MDV 106 again very budget friendly but extremely clean looking what you get here is something that essentially looks like a dive or a Rolex Submariner at you know maybe 40 bucks you know I would say probably 40 to 60 bucks but it looks extremely professional it doesn't come with this needle band it comes with a regular black I want to say resin band but even then it still looks very sharp and it's not it's not a loud watch it's very humble so great for that type of uh, rank um, so yeah I highly recommend this one great for your budget at that rank 
and again all of these watches you know really for any rank I would recommend these watches they're they're very good and very reliable uh, one of my buddies he he was a chief before he retired and he was a diver and he swore by the 9052 and I mean if a Navy diver will swear by this cheap watch then uh, you know that this watch will work for anybody um, so yeah that's what I got for E1 through E3 uh, let's go on to the next rank all right, so now you got promoted to E4. Congratulations. You're probably looking for an upgrade to your watch because your previous watches were all beat to hell. Um, again, these watches in E1 to E3 can more than comfortably afford them. This is just my personal evolution of how I shifted through my watch collection. Um, so right now I've got the G-Shock 8900 and just an absolute phenomenal watch. Something that I really like about the 8900 series is their user friendliness. They're very easy to use, very easy to read, and there's several different styles for whatever, whatever look that you like. Um, you've got the GR8900 series, which have the solar charging capability. This is just a standard quartz watch, but you know G-Shocks will last several years, so I'm not too concerned about this not having solar the uh, solar charging functionality. Oh, yeah, super easy to use. You've got very easy to read display. So I highly recommend this for junior service members. Going on to some other digital watches that I recommend um, and personally that I owned as an E4. We've got the G-Shock Mudman or the G9000. If you've seen my other videos you know that I will swear by these watches. Uh, really these to me are the standard of reliability and toughness for all digital watches. So, yeah, definitely recommend these. And uh, some other ones, we've got a Timex here. Well, this is very similar, or I feel the same way about this as I do my 8900. They're very large, easy to read displays, so perfect, especially when um, Timekeeping is super important in the military. And then some more, just for variety, we've got the uh, Timex Atlantis here. We've got this model and this model. Um, these ones are a little bit harder to come by, I think because there's kind of a cult following for these ones. So if you do see one at a good price and it's available for sale, I highly recommend, if you're a collector, to snag one. And uh, so now you're looking at dress watches as an E4. Um, you cannot go wrong with Invictas. Here I've got some Invicta Pro Divers. I have done a review on these already, but the, the main thing here is they're super affordable and very good quality. Yeah, you've got the haters out there that hate Invicta, but you know, for somebody who's in the military and they're not really caring too much about what watch they have on their wrist, they just need something that looks clean, uh, I really really recommend the Invictas um, but if you are a watch collector as a as a young service member then you really can't go wrong with a Seiko either now Seikos are very high quality they're very well respected in the watch community um, and still affordable you know definitely more expensive than an Invicta but well within the price range especially especially if you went out on a deployment and you came back and your bank accounts just full because you haven't been able to spend any money then I highly recommend the Seiko and the good thing about these watches are they're not attention getters right so you you really shouldn't be an E4 wearing a Rolex because it just doesn't make sense right and then people in your command will start being like hey does this guy have financial problems is he stealing money because you know having a ten thousand dollar watch doesn't make sense but you can have a watch that looks like it's worth ten thousand dollars but still very budget friendly so those are my recommendations for uh, operational and dress watches as an E4 alright let's go on to the next rank so now we're E5's now we made board for sergeant or we got selected to become second class petty officers we're also getting BAH so we're paid to live out in town and we probably have you know three or four roommates and we've got a lot more expendable income and we are even deeper and further into our watch collecting addic addiction slash obsession so in front of you I've got another G-Shock Mudman this is the newer model also more expensive but uh, very good quality 
also just a fantastic user interface you've got the compass plus it just looks cool you know I know that that's not what we focus on in the military you're really looking for functionality and practicality but also you know you want to make sure that you got a watch that looks good on your uniform and I think the Mudman really does meet all of those wickets and checks all those boxes as a tactical looking watch and also an extremely functional watch yeah, highly recommend the Mudman both of them either or you can get the G9000 or this one which is the GW9300 um, some other digital watches that I would recommend let's, let's stick with G-Shock for now I've got the G Rescue 7900 there are several different colorations and models that you can get this one specifically is the multi-band 6 with the solar charging functionality fantastic watch and just great for reliability um, and and cost is still also very affordable and going to Timex I added this one here just because I'm not really a fan of the Timex command but I do acknowledge that it is a good quality watch and um, very very practical and applicable for service members and then last one here the Nixon Regulus this one is a little bit more expensive but still more than reasonable for an E5 it's extremely good quality and once you start getting more into that look and also that expendable income uh, highly recommend the Nixon alright and for dress watches as an E5 let's see we've got uh, Citizen here so now we're going into more of the higher end big name watch companies this is the pro master I have swapped out the band for a shark mesh band but uh, even without swapping it out it's a st still a very clean looking dive watch very professional looking and then right here is the Seiko sports automatic watch also a very clean looking dive watch that looks extremely good on dress uniforms uh, and then I've got this one here another G-Shock I don't know if this would be a dress watch but still a very good watch for service members and uh, you know you could probably wear it on a dress uniform or even just on your day-to-day -day, um, working uniform or uniform of the day so I added this one in here I had it as an E5 and I, I absolutely loved it all right, next rank. All right, now we are E6s. Um, basically, we made tech sergeant, staff sergeant, first class petty officer, and we are upgrading our watches. Um, so right now in front of you, I've got the 9400 or G-Shock Rangeman. Now this one, you know, E5s, E6s, really, once you start getting up into that management position, really the watches and what, you, what you're wearing really kind of all blend together. Um, but again this this is just how my collection progressed so another fantastic watch I will say as far as visibility goes this one's probably the worst one because the negative display on the range man is absolutely atrocious but if you're able to look past that what we have here is an extremely functional watch ABC watch so altimeter barometer compass temperature um, very practical this button right here is a uh, shortcut to your stopwatch and I absolutely love that feature and yep just super super good quality watch there's the there's the back Let's see some other watches that I had growing up alright here's another one this is definitely more on the higher end or uh, less budget friendly but the frogman and and if you do watch my videos you'll know that I rave about this one fantastic watch it is a dive watch so you can rest assured that this can handle anything that you throw at it um, some other ones here I've got a citizen tough this you know can be a dress watch but it I think it's really designed to be worn um, just in any environment, but it still looks clean and uh, very good quality 
Uh, here's another G-Shock. Here's the GST S110. Also can be used interchangeably as a dress watch and as a field watch. Really, the, these two right here are tool watches. And then same thing here, Casio Pro Trek. This one, you know, from I would say E6 and up, you can wear it comfortably and it doesn't look out of place on your uniform. And then here's another one. Citizen Ecozilla, just an absolute tank of a watch. And Seiko Excelsior. This is definitely more of a dress watch, but I did buy this when I was an E6 because I was looking for more of a dressier watch to have in my wardrobe, and I absolutely love this one. This one is kind of an acquired taste, though. I, I do understand that the design is really out there but if you do like it if this is piquing your interest and I highly recommend this one and that's all I got for E6 let's go on up to E7 all right going on to the next rank I'm gonna group E7 through E9 all together at least in my experience E7 through E9 are all in the same peer group I don't know if that applies to the other branches which is but for me personally that's why I'm gonna branch E7 through E9 together um, but yeah, right in front of you, I've got the Seiko Turtle. And the reason why I added this to my collection was when I made Chief, or E7 in the Navy, um, I really wanted to get a gold style watch. Obviously this isn't gold, but it has the gold coloration. And while it's not strongly enforced um, per the uniform regulations, only E7 and above should wear gold style jewelry on their persons. Again, it's not strongly enforced. I never enforced it. You know, if some of my sailors wanted to wear gold, um, you know, rings or watches or whatever, I didn't really care. Um, but yeah, so that's why I got it. It was kind of like a congratulatory gift to myself when I made Chief. And it's just a fantastic watch. Highly respected in the watch community, at least as far as I can tell. And uh, it has not disappointed me so far. And uh, sticking with Seiko's, here we go. This is the Seiko... Arnie reissued version so this isn't the original Arnie this is the new one that came out recently um, just another fantastic watch and and it just looks absolutely badass it's such a cool looking watch not budget friendly which is why I'm grouping these watches more in the E7 and above because if we're just going off of base pay and not all the extra pays and bonuses that you get then um, really you know I wouldn't recommend for my junior sailors to blow their paycheck on more expensive watches. Um, let's see, another Seiko. This one I just recently got. This is the Seiko Tuna or SBBN031. This is a tool watch. So really, for the junior sailors that are getting down and dirty with whatever work they're doing, you know, this is a fantastic watch. But it is extremely expensive too, um, which is why I put it in this rank group and uh, let's see here we go the citizen skyhawk this is the blue angel version I just recently did a review on this one but a very professional looking watch also very tough and reliable I would say that this is a tool watch I think it could definitely be a tool watch with a titanium band and case sapphire crystal and all that good stuff but it looks super good in an office environment, um, which, you know, it's kind of ironic because the higher rank you go, the tougher the watches you get, but they're not really used in those kind of tough, dirty environments, but still a very professional and clean looking watch. Um, I've got some Nixons here. These ones are more like fun watches. I would say they're a little gaudy, but because they're gold, that's why I got them because I thought it looked really good in my khaki uniform. So, yeah, again, you know, any rank could probably get these two specific watches, but personally for myself, I waited till I made shape to get them. And then last one here is my Citizen Aqualand. I did swap out the band. This band cost me like 12 bucks on eBay. So, 
you know it's probably not the highest quality but as far as i can tell it's been great for twelve dollars you know this it makes this watch look like you know a couple hundred dollars watch, which it is a couple hundred bucks but you know the band just adds to the overall look of what the value should be so yeah anyways that's all i gotta say for now um th again this was just a fun video to do I was bored being stuck in quarantine, and if you are too, I hope that this video brought you some kind of entertainment or relief from being stuck inside. And again, I cannot emphasize enough that this is not like my set in stone opinion. This was just from my personal experience going up through the ranks in the military. These are the watches that I looked at and what I bought for each specific rank. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that this, you know, maybe I was able to show you some watches you never heard of and that I hope that this helps you with your next watch purchase. So that's all I got to say for now. Thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe so you can stay up to date as soon as I publish new videos. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.